another minute, right? Spacebar. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then going back, is it? Or no? Yeah. Okay. Just in case I get trigger happy. Good morning. We're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Peyton Lindley. I am the executive director of Experience Design at Effective UI, and uh, we are a user-centered um, design and development agency located in Denver, Colorado. And I'm here with my client. Matt Eves from CTCA, and we're really excited to share a recent case study and some work that we did with them together uh, focusing on uh, patient-centered care. Good morning, uh, Matt Eves, and I'm the Director of Engagement for Cancer Treatment Centers of America, and engagement is what we refer to in terms of online and interactive, so I oversee all of online for, for CTCA. And to just give you a bit of background about, about uh, our... Is it? Not going. I'm sorry if I was having a bit of problem with the slide, but I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, just to give you a bit of background in terms of, uh, in context, in terms of who CTCA is, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America is a, a network of, of privately owned cancer specialty hospitals, and we have locations throughout the United States. And our focus is really on uh, late stage and complex cancer, so, so treating people whose disease has progressed or um, is, is a little more difficult to, to treat than in an earlier stage. Um, and what really separates us in, in terms of in what will be relevant to this presentation is, that, well, like most hospitals, we want to offer, offer the most advanced technology, the latest care, and then also do that with a team of, of doctors uh, who are very qualified at, at treating that, that type of disease. Um, but the, the differentiator for us, I think you can go back just one Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so the differentiator for us really is, is patient centricity in terms of everything that we do is really centered around the patient. And I mean that both literally and, and figuratively and, and literally in the sense that uh, we have a team of experts that literally sit around the patient and when the patient comes in, they, they meet with that patient and, and come in the room one by one. It's this team of experts. And, and figuratively in the sense that the patient really is at the center of all we do. And, and in our case, that, that means that we, we truly understand and have a clear vision about who our customer is. And it's not insurance companies, it's not uh, pharmaceutical companies, it's, it's the patient that we're there to take care of. And so, as you can see from this photo, this is a photo of our, our hospital uh, in Tulsa, that's the exterior, and, and this is a photo of the interior of our hospital in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, actually in Goodyear, Arizona. And, and one of the things that we hear patients say when they come to us is, I knew CTCA was the, the place for me the moment I walked through the door, and a lot of our patients are coming to us for, for second opinions, and, and they maybe they've treated somewhere else and, and want to explore other types of care. And, and statistically, we have a very, very high rate of, of people that actually come to us for an evaluation that stay for treatment. Um, but that is in, in, in sharp contrast to the experience that we offer on our website. And as you can see, just from the images I showed you of our hospital, both you know, exterior and interior, our website really doesn't convey that the type of experience that we're offering in, internally in, in our hospitals and in the type of care that we're delivering. And so, our website statistically, probably like many of you who are online, has a conversion rate in the low single digits, right? So we have this very stark contrast between the experience that we're offering inside of our hospitals and that when people arrive, they say, yeah, this, this is for me, that this is what I need, versus the experience that we're offering on our website. And, and it's not really resonating with people. It's not conveying uh, the message that it needs to convey, or more importantly, getting across the message that it needs to get across in terms of the type of care that we deliver. So. The, the, the reason that we partnered with Effective UI is we're, we're trying to, how do you communicate this type of thing? How do you communicate a, a differentiated level of care that necessarily isn't the nuts and bolts, right? It's things like people making eye contact with you in the hospital and when you're walking the halls or when you ask somebody where the drinking fountain is or where the bathroom is, they walk you there, they don't point. Um, and, and, and also things like, go ahead and do it. You know, and also things about, you know, the sort of, again, the nuts and bolts of communicating best-in-class cancer treatment, right? And the fact that we have high-quality professionals, people who are seasoned in oncology and the latest technology. 
And then also that, that people are, or the people that we hire are really people people, right? Or they're, they're, they're people persons. And, and meaning, what I mean by that is in oncology especially, there, there is a, a tendency for clinicians not to get too close to the patients, obviously, because some of the outcomes aren't so good. Uh, but we want to, to make sure that when people are coming through our doors, that we are developing those personal relationships with them and that they really feel like we, we do have a, a, a stake in making sure that they get better. I mean, that's the focus about making them get better. And then also making sure that we're communicating that we have a, a tightly collaborative team. And, and this is something that you typically see in agile development. From, from a healthcare perspective, we want to communicate that this team really is working together, meeting on a daily basis, discussing your case, and moving things through. And, and that's, that's, the, that's what we needed to bring to life. And that's a difficult thing to do. And it's a difficult thing to do in an online environment. And that's why we partnered with Effective UI. And that's what we're going to talk to you about today, is how do we move that wonderful experience that's happening offline uh, and moving it into the, the online environment. And I, and I use wonderful you know, in the sense of just, in, not in the sense of oncology, but in the sense of you know, there is this experience that patients have told us they value. And how do we move that, again, to the online environment? So the question for us is, when we started partnering with CTCA, how exactly do we do this? How do we engage? Um, I think there were some initial conversations uh, with Matt and his team about a variety of different approaches. And I think oftentimes when you launch into a project like this, it's easy to think about um, perhaps like a solution first. You know, We started thinking about a rich media platform, and we started thinking about technology. And the idea was really to sort of flip that on its head and say, you know, we really want to leverage you know, some human-centered design techniques and really begin to understand the patient experience. So to Matt's point earlier, talking about, you know, yes, they have best-in-class doctors and technology, but what is the experience going to be like? And how do we convey that in the digital medium? So before we go in and talk a little bit about our, our case study here, and hopefully that will give you some some tips and techniques that you can take away from the conference here. There's been a lot of discussion about you know, why customer experience is important. And our hope here is to drill in a little bit and talk about well, how you can execute on, on leveraging uh, human-centered design techniques for bringing to light a great customer experience. So just to take a step back, we want to talk a little bit about the landscape that we operate in. So from our perspective, there's sort of this, this large umbrella called brand experience. And that's really the sum total of all of your, your brand touch points, both online and offline, uh, with your customer. And a lot of the conversations I've been having with people here at the conference have really talked about this disconnect that's happening between marketing and customer experience. A lot of people will say on customer experience teams, hey, you know, we own the interactive part, but marketing owns the content. And for us, this project was a way to really bring these two worlds together in a way that was, was meaningful and, and hopefully seamless for the end user. And so we see these things as you know, needing to come together. And there's definitely some overlap. And we would encourage you to make sure that you're having those conversations in your organization. So naturally, that brings together a question of you know, what, wh why would we marry human-centered design methods and marketing? And for us, this is sort of akin to the, the chocolate and the peanut butter. So enjoy your, your Reese's that are out there on the table uh, or on your chairs. But for us, these things go well together. Um, typically, when you think about human-centered design methods, you think about them to solve a specific uh, product issue or a user interface issue. And in this case, we leverage these methods and techniques to really tell a rich story that went beyond just content um, that was sort of telling something to the audience, but trying to convey a more meaningful experience. Yeah, and from, from our perspective, you know, we, we felt there's nothing more human-centric than healthcare or customer or patient-centric than, than healthcare. And so not just about marketing, but really about communicating that through, through human-centered design. So I imagine that uh, many of you in this field have done research on customers. And really, the question for us is, what type of research have you been doing? So I'm sure we're all familiar with uh, large quantitative surveys. And for us, those are great because they give you a really broad lens into you know, who's coming to your site, who's coming to your physical locations, how many, and what are they looking for? And the, oftentimes, the missing piece is really sort of this second half, which is a qualitative approach, which for us, really begins to answer some different questions, which is how, why, and whether. So in this instance, how are people using our products or services? Why are they using them? Why are they adopting them? And whether or not those services are resonating. And for us, marrying those two and blending those two is, is really great. And a lot of the clients that we work with and talk to 
often have a ton of, of quantitative data, and that's a great start. And you've heard a lot of stories about people saying, get out of the conference room, go out into the field. And this is certainly uh, what we would promote as well in terms of getting out, doing some ethnographic research, and making sure that you are bringing that, that voice of the customer, in this case, the voice of the patient, uh, forward in your execution. So part of what we want to convey here today is that how we work together is just as important as what we produce together. So what we'll be talking through is the methodologies. And when I say methodologies, I think almost more like a toolkit. I think oftentimes when we think about creating digital products, uh, there's, a, there's a notion of process which suggests repeatability. And while repeatability is certainly a good thing, uh, oftentimes when you're undergoing a user-centered design process, you also need to think about you know, more of a toolkit approach, if you will, where you bring the right tools to the right job, you remain flexible, and you adjust as appropriate. So I wanted to talk a little bit about two different ways, and, and this sort of gets to, at a high level, you know, client agency models, if you will. So what we call the black box approach, where you know, maybe some of you experienced this before, where you, you, know, you have a firm that goes off and does a bunch of customer insight research, and then they go into a bit of a black box during their analysis and synthesis phase, and then they present back a very large deck of findings and outputs. And there's this gap that happens you weren't necessarily along for the journey. You didn't really understand what, what was happening there. And the method that we're really promoting here is what we would call the co-created approach. So oftentimes when we go out and do customer insight with our clients, we encourage them to get out into the field with us to experience what their customers, in this case again, patients, nurses, caregivers, were saying about the CTCA experience and what was differentiated about it. And through this process, You'll see there are a number of areas here where we, we facilitate workshops as a way to promote dialogue and make sure that we act as one team and we're on the same page moving forward. Yeah, and from the, the client side, and some of you probably experienced this, I mean, at times the, the top approach is appropriate for certain things, but I think in the case like this, the reason that we felt that this bottom approach really worked well for us is effective UI was really taking all the insight that we have and then working through it in an iterative process so we knew at every step of the way that it was aligning back to the customer research as well as our objectives internally and then when we got to the final output there was no surprise there was no big reveal and then us saying well that doesn't really fit or we wouldn't say it that way it was right on which really helped in terms of moving it forward from a senior leadership perspective. So I wanted to take a moment and talk a little bit about this initial engagement phase, which we refer to as experience planning. Uh, something that's really important for us as we engage with any client, um, how many of you guys sit on the client side? Just show of hands. Okay, and we have folks from agencies here as well? Okay. So oftentimes you go through this you know, traditional RFP process and there's, there's sort of a, a focus on scope and deliverables and deadlines and, and you kick off the project and you're, you're off to the races and oftentimes it's easy to, to you know, forget to talk about are we aligned? Are we actually solving what we think is the same problem? And so for us it's important to achieve that alignment through the context of workshops. Uh, so in experience planning, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're centering on the right problem. So the great news is that CTCA had actually done a ton of really interesting research uh, the sketch that you saw up there was a first iteration. We're big believers in using visuals to convey what's happening in the problem space. And then we generated a, a more simplistic version to distribute throughout the team and refer back to as we worked on the project. But in essence, CTCA had a lot of great research. And we did a gap analysis to try to figure out what is the patient journey as they're going from this initial research phase, so before they even find out, with, find out about CTCA or engage with CTCA, what does their decision making and their research process look like? Again, we pulled a lot of that from the findings that they already had, but what we came out with was that there was this gap that existed in you know, a potential patient's mind, mostly based on a lack of trust and knowledge. I don't have the information that I need and I'm not sure you know, that this might be the right facility for me. And so. The project that we work on, worked on was squarely aimed at solving this problem. 
Yeah, and this was important for us because we had had this research for a while and we got to the point where we had taken it as far as we could take it and we really weren't really able to, to drive anything new out of it and we felt like we were stuck. And so we'll take you through the process that we went through in a, in a second here, but that, that process really helped us to get unstuck and really breathe new life into this research and help us to really meet patients at different points on that journey. And not all of that's intended to get people to come to our facility. It really is about being a valuable partner, providing them with information when they're seeking information, providing them with answers when they're seeking answers and that sort of thing. So that really was you know, helpful in terms of going through this process of, of making use of this research. So to start off with, we ran a, a workshop you know, between Effective UI and CTCA. It was a cross-functional workshop. And we wanted to make sure that we had proper and appropriate representation from all departments. So uh, certainly, we've got a lot of people sitting around a table, lots of whiteboards and stickies. and. Really, this is designed to facilitate that dialogue to get people on the same page. Make sure that we're aligning and prioritizing the business objectives appropriately. But then our workshops often shift into a second half where we're trying to understand the customer's viewpoint. So really talking about having empathy for, in this case, uh, the patient experience. And what you're looking at here is a, a shot of uh, someone from the development team working through an exercise, trying to get a sense of what it's like to be uh, in that patient's shoes. And I think with a lot of projects, and even on our side, th this is where it typically ends, right? We sit in a conference room and we, we put up post-its about what we think the customer is thinking and we put ourselves in their shoes and we do some role playing and, and really try to get to answers that way. But with this project, we really took it a step further and, and, and went into the hospital and really heard from the people that were actually doing the work and interacting with patients. Yeah, so what you're looking at here is what we call a day in the life. So. Again, cross-functional team, both Effective UI and CTCA, did an end-to-end -end tour of what a patient would experience uh, going through the entire process. Yeah, and so as you can see here, that, that's the, the picture on the left. That's us talking to the head of our, our, our uh, surgical oncology, the, the head nurse, and really giving us a sense of what, what is it she's doing on a daily basis? What are patients thinking about when they come in? What are their fears, or, or how is it that we can help them better in terms of preparing them for that? And then on the right, and in our infusion center, and hearing from the, the folks that are running that, and, and, and what is it that, that, that a patient experiences in that, and, and what is it the types of things that they need to know uh, before coming in? So again, to Matt's point, sort of getting beyond the conference room setting and getting out into the field and understanding what's happening uh, on the ground. From there, we went into a series of co-creation sessions. And what you're looking at here are actually artifacts that we produced, uh, you know, little, little people here that can be dragged around on a, on a sheet. Um, and we, we did a session with nurses. So once we understood the context that we were designing to, we actually did a series of uh, workshops with the nurses to outline almost an on-the-fly customer journey map, if you will. So we talked about the different stages. You know, there's a lot of talk about journey maps, and I think that you know, finding a way to, to produce these creatively and iteratively so that you are continuing to move along the path. Another point that I'd like to, to make here is there's a lot of talk about sketching in the industry right now as, as a way to get people to collaborate. My personal belief is that sketching actually has a very high bar to entry. I think a lot of people who aren't comfortable necessarily with drawing get a little nervous about it. And so our intent here is to create artifacts and tools that lower the barrier for participation. Um, and from that perspective, we had uh, you know, some really exciting results, I think, in terms of the, the level of engagement. Yeah, and, and I can definitely <clears throat> speak to that as well. I think when you ask people to come into a room and sketch, especially when you're asking clinicians, nurses, and oncologists, it, it's just not as comfortable when you took the time and preparation and to, to create all those artifacts. People are much more engaged, and the end result was a much, much deeper understanding of that entire journey. Um, so we got a much better end result by, by putting the, the work in up front to create those artifacts. So given that we had kicked off the workshop, we had done a day in the life, and we had gone through some deep co-creation sessions with the nurses uh, and oncologists and caregivers there, it was time to do our analysis and synthesis on the research, really do a deep dive. And for us, space is an important concept. You know, we create sort of these war room type areas where we are, as project teams, surrounded by the information. You can see inspiration boards, the starts of lots of different information uh, loaded up here. But the key point is that for us, especially given the timeline, as well as the need to turn into design pretty quickly, the intent here after all this research was not to create a, a, a large deck. The intent was to turn into design as quickly as possible.
Yeah, and that, that was helpful from, our, from the client from our standpoint in that we weren't going through a, a large PowerPoint deck and, and seeing what, what, what was coming back. I mean, literally everything that, we came, that came back and out of this project is on that board. And so we literally able to stand in front of it and say, yes, that, that, that meets the needs. Those are the communication points we need to hit. And it ties back to the research. Because if it's more complicated than that, then it's probably going to be too complicated for the user to absorb as well. And so keeping it you know, very simple, I think, was very important as opposed to putting the time and effort into creating these large uh, reports. And, and this is in terms of, uh, well, do you want to, in terms of, well, in terms of low fidelity. So going from the, 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 uh, the research that we were doing, instead of moving into this heavy wireframing process, we started doing these low, uh, Effective UI would do these low uh, fidelity illustrations. And basically what it allowed us to do is say, yeah, that, that's hitting the mark or no, it's not as opposed to you know, putting a ton of time in and then again, as I said before, having this big reveal and then we say, well, that doesn't really work. Let's go back and do two, two more weeks of work. I mean, we were able to look at this in three or four minutes and say, yep, it's on the mark or no, we need to change it a little bit here. We actually didn't end up going with this, but it helped it directionally to, to put us on the, the, the right path. And so if you'll, you'll think back to our co-created model, I just described a series of workshops that we go through. This is our second major workshop um, where we you know, called it telling the story. So again, we had you know, amassed all of this information and we had done our analysis and synthesis and now it was time to bring the larger teams back together to say, here's what we found, here's, here's an open framework for us to discuss and ultimately we are going to co-create the story of the patient experience uh, in, the, in the construct of, you know, we came up with this, this sort of framework of acts and scenes in, in the way that people would think about it from a linear perspective. Yeah, and so this was really the end, the end result of, of everything we put together in coming out of that room and really dividing this up into three parts, which is before someone comes to the hospital, what are the things that they're thinking about? Uh, when they do come and they're there for that three to five day evaluation, that initial diagnosis, what, what does that experience look like? And then ultimately when they're coming here for treatment, what, what does that look like? What are the components of that? And so breaking that down into small chunks so that when people are looking at this, they can say, okay, I understand the value here and I understand what it is that you're providing. So once we had all the storyboards uh, put together, we went out on site and did a bunch of filming. And something that might have been a little bit different here is that you know, typically on a shoot, you have things that are fairly tightly scripted. Uh, from our perspective, we, we continue to leverage those same sort of uh, ethnographic approach in terms of asking open-ended questions. We wanted it to feel natural um, and, and you know, real, if you will. Like, uh, a lot of the feedback that we got from, from nurses and patients was that we don't want it to feel like an advertisement. We want it to feel like we can actually connect with real human beings. And so you know, we knew who we were going to talk to. We knew what we wanted to shoot, but we kept things fairly open-ended in terms of the questions that we asked. And, and that's a, a rule for us. We don't script anything as it relates to marketing when we're talking to our patients or clinicians. Uh, but, it, but in this case, it was especially good to keep it loose because it really, again, we felt like we had a good experience to communicate and all we wanted to do is to get the folks that are, that are responsible for that experience to communicate exactly what it is that we have to offer. So what we want to do now, that just talks a little bit at a high level about the, the process and methodology that we went through. Uh, but we also wanted to talk about the results. What is the, uh, the end state of this project and where we netted out? So at this point, I'll have Matt walk you through. This is basically a prototype. Uh, this is not yet live uh, that we worked on. And this talks through uh, the overall experience that we created together as a team. So, so probably the biggest challenge for this project was the information architecture and what are the things that we really need to communicate. And so we broke it down into three chunks, which I talked about before coming, the, the evaluation, and then once you're in treatment. But really what we wanted to do is give people a sense. And so before you come, you, know, you have questions like, well, where are you located? Where, where, is, the, where, is, your, where are your facilities? Uh, if you were to, to contact us, who would it be that you're talking to? And, and what type of value do they provide when you actually do pick up the phone? Uh, do I have the ability to, to connect with patients who are treating with you now or have in the past so that I get a full understanding? And if you choose to, to come to our facility, uh, how is it that we help you to get here? And how, how do we help to collect things like medical records and those sorts of things? And then, 
moving on, uh, in terms of the, the three to five day evaluation, I think people, what we were hearing in the research is, well, why do I need to come to your facility for three to five days? What are you going to do in five days that my local hospital could, could do in a shorter amount of time or not? So really taking people through exactly what that looks like. Uh, we have uh, images of the hospital. Most people now won't even uh, you know, check into a hotel or make a reservation at a hotel without seeing what the inside looks like. Um, and so we, we certainly feel the same way about cancer treatment, that they have to be able to see what it, what's inside. But you know, we want to give them a sense of who's on that team when you come in, who you'll be meeting with, um, and then also always the opportunity to, to hear from patients. And then finally, I think probably, and, and most importantly, is talking about the treatment that we provide. What type of technology do we offer? Um, who, who is the team that would actually be treating you? What is their level of expertise? What is their background? Where do they go to school? Um, talking about the, the model that we provide in terms of when the patient actually comes in. Um, and then as we've talked about, you know, one of those differentiators for us, which is the, the people that we hire and how are they compassionate and being able to hear from them and, and their story. And then, again, as always, being able to, to hear from the patient in terms of, of their experience. So, uh, you know, th again, this isn't completely live yet. Uh, we just finished the, the, the design phase, which you see here, and then we're starting to put this into to code now. And so within a few weeks, it'll, it'll be up on the site. So... What did we learn throughout this process? How, how would we do things better, do things differently next time? So, so for me, I, I think the biggest takeaway from the client side is, and we've tried this in the past, where you go out and you buy books, whether it's on persona development or even human-centered design. And I think having the right people at the table, people that actually have, and whether it's effective UI or another human-centered design uh, firm or agency, it, it's important to have those folks. Because just like with the research I talked about, we ended up getting stuck, and we weren't able to get past things because we just didn't have the experience. And so most importantly for me was just having the right people at the table, people that had the ability to, to get a room full of clinicians and, and facilitate a meeting and making sure that we were getting the results out of that that we needed. Uh, so, so by far, that was the, the, the biggest takeaway or the, the, the most important component uh, for me in terms of the, this project. Yeah, I think from the agency side, I think it's just really important to make sure that when you're engaging with a client, that you make sure that all the right people are at the table in terms of understanding the problem space and making sure that those people are there throughout the project. I don't think that we would be having the success that we did with CTCA had we had a, a fractured team or people that you know, weren't there at the outset, but really they were there every step of the way. And so making sure that you're infusing collaboration and participation throughout the entire process is really critical to our success. Mm -hmm. So Matt, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, in terms of this experience with us, how would you think about taking some of these techniques uh, moving forward in, in future CTCA projects? So, so I think the, the biggest thing that we'll, we'll take away from this, you know, other than having the, the right folks at the table, is, is really moving through an iterative design process. And, and, we've, and we've certainly gotten the habit in the past of doing the, the big reveal, right? Uh, and I think that we, th this process proved to us that it's far more efficient to take the time to go through the iterative process, making sure you have all the right stakeholders within your organization at the table giving input, so that each step of the way it's aligning back to research and your, your overall objective, so that when you get to the end, and there's no surprises. It's exactly what everybody expected, and it meets the goals. And so going forward, that's what we'll, we'll definitely incorporate into all of our larger projects. Great. Well, with that, I wanted to thank you all for attending here today. Uh, we've got a few minutes left before lunch, and just wanted to open it up for any questions you might have. How long was the engagement? The question was, how long was the engagement? It was uh, eight weeks for, to get us to what you saw today, and then our team, just from a cost standpoint, we had pulled. We have a, de a full development team in house, and so uh, my team will develop it, and so probably another three to four weeks. So probably about twelve weeks total. So the, the question is, uh, the, the, everything in the site was vertical. There's only really three horizontal uh, directions that you can go. And how is it that we're going to, to tag that? And so basically, what you didn't see in that is it's a parallaxing site. So stuff builds as you, as you scroll. And so probably the way that we'll do it, for those of you that are using Onager and probably even Google, what we'll do is, is tag each scene as a different page. And so every time somebody hits that, we'll tag that as a page view. Uh, that, that's we haven't gotten to that point yet, but that's a, a, from a design standpoint.
standpoint, that's how we're anticipating. But you know, we did have concerns going in is, are people going to scroll? Are they going to know to scroll? And so that's something that we'll keep a close eye on, too, from a design. But that's the beauty of web, is if it, if the content's there, we just may need to restructure it if, in fact, that design doesn't work. Question up here? Yeah, I mean, it, we will. We haven't yet, but we certainly will. I mean, every, every piece of research that we do is certainly leveraged across all of our other marketing channels. But the, the, the reality is most of the, the marketing that we're doing is either in television or online and, and not a lot of other direct mail or radio or those types of things. So television would be probably the only other place we could apply that. But yeah, we certainly would leverage that research. Another question back here? Just repeat the question, make sure we understand it. So the question was multiple device modalities and, and is CTCA working forward in those? And, and just so I understand, so you mean allowing someone on a mobile device to access this? Are you saying that the hospital, the tools that the hospital's providing? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a completely separate scope from what we're uh, tackling here, but absolutely. I mean, I think that it's absolutely something that our organization is thinking about. And, and you know, again, back to my comment about patient centricity, uh, being a lot able to, to give patients that, that ability to communicate with their doctor when they're at home via Skype or, or mobile devices is absolutely something that we're looking at. But. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Any other questions? All right, thanks very much for your time. Thank you, everyone.